The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hello, Karen here again with the Learning Circuit. So far all the projects I've made on the show have been DC circuits getting a steady current from either a battery pack or plugging into the wall using an AC to DC converting power supply. Well, it's time to expand our horizons and dig into the other side of electric flow, AC, alternating current. When any circuit is connected to a voltage source, electric current flows, powering the circuit. The two types of electric current are DC, direct current, and AC, alternating current. In DC circuits, the electric current flows in one direction. These power sources often maintain a constant voltage. In the case of batteries, the voltage only changes slightly as the power source is slowly drained. Generally, Direct current is produced by AC to DC converting power supplies, batteries, dynamo generators, and solar cells to name a few. Alternating current, or AC, is called so because the direction of current flow alternates. Rather than maintaining a constant voltage like DC, AC alternates between a positive voltage to a negative voltage at the same amplitude. These waves can be a variety of shapes. The kind of AC accessible in homes and offices will have a sine wave like this one. Square AC waves are symmetrical and for testing digital and switching electronics. A triangle or sawtooth waveform may be used for testing linear electronics like amplifiers, as well as for music synthesis with audio devices because of its high harmonic capacity. AC doesn't always necessarily have a clean waveform and may appear as a complex or irregular waveform. AC waves are measured in various ways, including amplitude, being the peak values, or highest and lowest points of the wave, which should be the same values, but equally positive and negative. However, AC waves are often described as their RMS value, rather than their peak value. RMS stands for root mean square. The RMS can be calculated by multiplying the peak to peak voltage by the square root of two, approximately 0.707. So notably, the RMS value is always lower than the peak value. AC waves are also measured by the distance or timing of one cycle, which can be measured from any two equal points of the wave. For example, highest peak to peak or lowest peak to peak. The cycle can be used to determine the frequency of the waveform, which is how many cycles per second, measured in hertz. When actively observing an AC wave, the current position in time is known as the phase. The positive phase is while the voltage is positive, and the negative phase is while the voltage is negative. The most recognizable form of AC is the power coming into your home or office that you can access from a wall outlet, often referred to as mains power. In the US, household mains has a value of 120 volts AC. 120 is the RMS value. 120 volts AC can actually reach a peak amplitude of closer to 170 volts. Remember, the RMS voltage and peak amplitude can be calculated for an AC wave value. 120 is the RMS voltage in the US and Canada, but the RMS voltage varies in countries around the world. Other countries have RMS values of 100 volts all the way up to 240 volts, but most commonly, RMS voltages are 220 and 240 volts. Note that the frequency for all world mains voltages are either 50 or 60 hertz. AC mains power is generated elsewhere and then transmitted locally via power lines. However, over these long distances, power is lost due to the high currents of AC. This can be compensated for by using transformers. One of the benefits of using AC over DC for mains is how easy it is to convert between voltages. A transformer can be used to step up or step down to change the voltage to make it higher or lower. Transformers use induction to transform electric current from one coil to another. By increasing or decreasing the size of the coil, as well as the number of turns, the voltage conversion ratio can be controlled, providing a larger or smaller change in voltage. To compensate for the power loss over distances, 
a transformer is used at the generation stations to step up the voltages for the long distance transmission. At the other end, a step down transformer, usually seen on utility poles, is used to bring down the voltages to safe levels for domestic and commercial use. At those generation stations, there are a variety of methods that are used to generate mains power. Power plants may burn fuel or split atoms to create steam to generate power. Turbines may be water or wind powered to harvest natural energy. And energy can also be harvested from naturally generated heat from the earth or sun. Many of these methods are used to generate rotational movement, which can be transformed into alternating current by means of a device called an alternator. An alternator functions similar to the types of motors we've learned about in the past, but is used to generate AC. When we learned about DC motors, we saw how the permanent magnets surrounding the rotor can interact with the coils on the teeth, which may be coiled in different directions to create alternating polarity and current flow in opposite directions. The current flow can be accessed through the commutators on the shaft that are connected to the wire coils. In an alternator, rather than alternating polarity, the coils on the rotor teeth maintain a constant polarity. Also in an alternator, rather than permanent magnets surrounding the rotor, like in a DC motor, there are more coils on an armature. Alternators use induction. So when the magnetic field of one of the rotor teeth coils passes by an outer armature coil, it generates a current flowing in one direction in that coil. As the rotor turns to the next tooth, which has the opposite polarity, the current in the outer coil reverses direction. As the rotor continues to turn, the teeth, with alternating polarity, cause a constantly alternating current to be generated in the outer coil. Since the outer coil is stationary, it is easy to connect to to access the generated current. This alternator is single phase. By adding two more coils to the armature, each with their own independent current, the alternator can generate what is known as three-phase power. With three-phase power, each leg may generate the local common RMS voltage, providing a total voltage of two to three times that. While three-phase power can get up to as high as 400 to 600 volts, AC isn't always just high voltage. It can also be low voltage, like with audio. In my video showing off op amps making an amplified stereo mic kit, I hooked the kit up to my oscilloscope to show off the audio waveforms pre and post amp. You can see that the audio signals are AC waveforms. This kit was powered by a 4.5 volt battery pack, therefore the audio signals were similarly low voltage. With these waveforms, you can see the smaller preamp wave has a very small amplitude, while the larger post amp wave has a much larger amplitude. Also, that these audio waves are in a regular shape, and the frequency changes to accommodate the changes in pitch. I mentioned earlier that one characteristic of an AC wave is phase. Wave phase is particularly relevant in audio applications. You may hear terms such as in phase, out of phase, or phase cancellation. Multiple waveforms of the same frequency where the peaks line up would be in phase which in audio is perceived as an increase in amplitude. If two or more waveforms are misaligned, they are out of phase. And in audio, when two waveforms of the same frequency are out of phase, but aligned perfectly opposed, you get a phenomenon known as phase cancellation. This can happen when speakers are incorrectly placed and their waveforms overlap in a way that causes sound loss of those out of phase frequencies. Kind of cool, but can also be a pain in the butt for audio engineers. While most electronic devices are DC, you can still find AC within DC devices, just like the audio amplifier kit I just talked about. Not only are AC audio waves generated by DC devices, DC devices use AC as timing circuits. All those 555 timer circuits I've covered in previous learning circuit episodes were using square AC waves. The faster LEDs flashed, the higher the frequency of that AC square wave. Whenever our DC projects are plugged into the wall for power, we're using an AC to DC converter or rectifier. Even my desktop power supply converts AC power to DC for convenient use. Rectifiers use, again, transformers, but also bridge diodes to convert AC power to DC power. For the reverse, 
When we have DC power but need AC, we use an inverter to convert between forms. Many machines in our daily lives use AC, such as TVs and light bulbs, as well as most home appliances like ovens, air conditioners, microwaves, and refrigerators. While most hobby projects are DC circuits, AC does come into play from time to time. I've mentioned a few ways AC might creep into a project, but for the sake of your fellow electronics enthusiast, I would love your help in expanding everyone's understanding. How has alternating current come up in one of your projects, past, present, or aspirational? Post your ideas and experience on the Element 14 community at element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. You can find me there as Maker Karen. Tag me if you like. In the meantime, happy learning!